Clamping across a miter joint can be a little bit tricky, but I've got a cool solution for you that involves a simple to make jig that's reusable. The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Type Bond. Now, if you're not familiar with why this is a difficult joint to clamp, just look at the way a clamp would engage with this. The clamp is meant to go across the joint and there's just nothing to grip onto because everything is at an angle. So there's a couple different ways that I've handled this in the past. One way is to use clamping blocks. Now you could attach these with double stick tape or something like CA glue. And the key though is you wanna use a soft species of wood. These two by four stock pieces would be great for this because after the CA glue dries and you need to pop this off, you want the weaker wood to be in your sacrificial block. And this way you just have a little bit of cleanup to do when you haven't pulled up any of this walnut. That's one solution. Another solution requires a lot of planning, and that is before you cut your pieces to final shape, you might be able to leave a little bit of extra material to put some kind of a ridge in there or a notch that you can set your clamp into and get the appropriate clamping pressure where you need it. Now, I think the best way to handle this is to use a reusable jig like this. These are actually two pieces. They're exactly the same. Uh, you have a block on here for clamping, permanently attached to a plywood strip with a little bit of sandpaper on there for extra grip. So you clamp them to your parts back here, and then you add an extra clamp across the joint, putting the pressure where you need it. So let me show you how we make them. I cut two pieces of three quarter inch plywood to about two inches wide and 24 inches in length. You can vary the size based on what you most frequently need to clamp. Now I'm cutting a couple of hardwood blocks with a 45 degree angle on one end. On the plywood strip, I'll add 80 grit sandpaper, and you don't absolutely need to do this, but the grippier this thing is, the less clamping pressure you'll need to secure it. Some spray adhesive should do the trick. And while I didn't do it here, you might want to apply some sandpaper to the angled face of the hardwood block. That'll give our clamp something better to grip on. Once the glue sets up, just use a sharp knife to trim the sandpaper around the edges. Very purpley. The blocks are then diligently pre-drilled and countersunk for screws, except I really wanted the screws to be on the plywood side. So those holes are now just decoration and I'll attach the blocks with glue and screws from the correct side. I'm a professional. Now using these guys is actually pretty straightforward, but there's a little bit of subtlety and nuance to it. So let's go through the process. Now you can make this a real trial and error process. Just try clamping it up, keep the joint dry. Uh, and just see which position gives you the best clamping pressure. Or you could just think ahead and draw some lines that might actually help you out here. So when the joint is together, I like to find the center of the joint. This is just by eye. You could certainly measure if you wanted to. Something like that. Then I'm gonna grab a square and extend that line. And the reason I'm using a square is because I wanna stay perpendicular to the joint. I don't care what these angles are. They could really be just about anything. What I wanna know is the perpendicular line at the center point of the joint. And go lightly because you're probably at a finished surface here, so we're gonna have to sand this out later. And of course, this is not just a butt joint, so I'm gonna add my dominoes here. Bring that joint together. Okay, like that. And to find the position of our strips, what we're looking to do is extend this line across to the center point of the clamp. So wherever this clamp is gonna go, and it's gonna roughly be centered uh, somewhere on this block. Now, remember, these angles were cut at 45 degrees. Unless this outside angle is 90, we're not gonna interface perfectly with this surface, but it's gonna be close enough, so I'm not too concerned about it. But what I'm aiming for is essentially the center of where that clamp is going to engage. So all I'm doing now is lining up my center points with these lines here, just by eye. Almost like I continue this line all the way across and I'm looking for it to engage with that line. And now on each side, I'm just gonna add a small clamp. That's the joy of using the sandpaper. It grips so well, you really only need one clamp. If you decide to forego the sandpaper, you may want to put two clamps on there just to be sure it doesn't slip. And then now all we need to do is add our third clamp across the joint and try to stay, keep your bar in line with that center line. The good thing about an F-style clamp is this little dojabi here, that's gonna wiggle and it's gonna find the angle. Uh, this one is flat and it's gonna be um, you know, kind of hitting it at a bit of an angle. So 
It won't be perfect, but you don't need a lot of clamping pressure on miter joints anyway. And things are gonna move a little bit, but again, remember, we just picked an angle here, and this is to accommodate a bunch of different angles in the work, anything that we might come across. And that is nicely clamped along the joint. That's success right there. Oh, one quick word of warning, I almost forgot. When you disassemble this jig, there's an order. You do not want to loosen these two before you loosen this one, because if you loosen these, this clamp wins the battle and everything is gonna go nuts. And depending on your workpiece, that could be real bad. So always make sure that you loosen the one on the joint first, and then take the clamps off the rest of the piece. Now, if you make two of these, you may as well make four, because even for my glue ups, I have two corners to do on each piece, and I have two of these pieces, so I kind of could use eight of them. <laughs> I don't have eight, uh, but if you make a couple, it's better just to make a whole bunch, and you got a nice little collection there. Um, but the best part about this is when I'm done, I take them off, there's no glue on them, there's no harm done to them, and I could reuse these uh, until they decide to break on me, which will take a very long time. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>